everybody, it's Adam for Lucid Pixel. And if that little scenario filled you with dread, if it's hashtag relatable, then you're not alone. <laughs> uh, and I think to start this talk off today, one of the first things I'm gonna share with you is something a little bit cliche. And that's the fact that we all go through this. And it's not only exclusive to ArtStation or DeviantArt or Google. This is something that can happen in studios as well. However, life isn't all gray clouds and stormy skies because what I wanna show you is how to navigate around all of these situations so that you're not only fighting off the depression or the demotivation, but it'll actually help to motivate you and boost your creativity and inspire you. So the first thing I find plays a very big role in this, and this is something that really took a long time for me to come to terms with. The thing I wanna emphasize here is that productivity is not a single thing. There isn't productive and non-productive. Different people are productive in different ways. And the way you start to realize this, the way I really started to realize this was to start researching not only the artists that I love in terms of their physical artwork, but to research their lifestyle, their work method, their history. Get to know these artists beyond the artwork that they produce. I'll give you a very good example. If you look at artists like, for instance, Scott Robertson or Feng Zhu, they are incredibly productive artists. They can produce large quantities of very high quality work in a very short period of time. They're incredibly, incredibly industrious with the way that they work. I'm not. I'm not that type of artist. And if I went back 10, 15 years in my life, I would have interpreted that as they're more productive than myself. But one of the things I learned is when you want to look at how productive somebody is, it's not about what they do from a day-to-day -day basis. You have to look at the body of their work over a long period of time. Now, naturally, some people work faster than others. Some people like to tinker with their work a lot more. Other people like to just pull something off and move on with their life type of idea. But if you look at an artist, for instance, like an artist that I absolutely love, somebody who inspires me and who I talk about all the time, uh, Gisław Bekszynski, a Polish artist who passed away not that long ago. Watch his documentaries online. There are a few that are actually subtitled and one that I'm gonna link in the description below is a video diary of his artistic process. And if you haven't watched it, you owe it to yourself to watch it because what he does is keep a video diary of the process of many of his pieces of art. And what you realize is sometimes he would spend 14 hours on a painting. He would do the sketch and the underpainting and he would start to layer it and glaze and do all these different layers of paint. Other days, he might stare at it for about seven hours and just put a few little details. Other days, he might not be able to at all because he would have to go and get food stamps because it was during communist Poland. He'd have to get food stamps to eat. And then he would sit down again and he would paint a little bit more. And if you watch this process, if you actually watched him working, you'd think, geez, it's amazing he got anything done. I would be surprised if he painted more than 10 or 15 pieces in his entire life at that pace. But if you go on Google and you look up Gisław Bekszynski, I'll write his name on the screen right here so you can, because it's hard to spell. If you look him up and look at the body of his work, just do a Google search and hit the images tab. You're going to see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of works countless works of incredibly, exquisitely high quality, detailed, emotional, moving artwork. How did he do it? Well, it's because, well, for one thing, he wasn't the type of person who would slam through a painting in a single day, maybe once in a very blue moon. But what he would do is he would do a sketch of one, maybe do two sketches. Then he would do the underpainting for one. Maybe he'd let this one sit for another. Maybe he'd start a third. He would come back and add some detail to the first one. He would come back and spend 14 hours on another. He'd look back at the third, throw it in the bin, the ones that got discarded. He would start another painting. Then he'd go back to the first one, add some more details. Then he wouldn't be able to touch that one at all. Then he'd have a day off. Then he'd go to the beach and then he'd come back and he would put some more time into it. He didn't work in 14, 15 hour stints in a row. He paced himself. He was thoughtful. He was methodical. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that he, I'm not saying that because he was a master painter and a celebrated painter, his process was better than Scott Robertson's, for instance. It was different. I've learned in my time to interpret productivity as a rhythm, as a type of music, a type of movement. 
Not every song makes me feel and moves me the same way. I'll give you an example. I've, been, I've danced salsa half my life. It's a huge passion of mine. When I go to a dance club, when I go to a salsa club, some songs are so moving and the music grabs me so much, it hits me so deeply in my core that even after 50 minutes of just going at it in the song, just dancing my heart out and I feel like I'm gonna have a heart attack, I can't stop myself from moving. And then I'll sit down and the next song comes on and even though it's a very good song and even though half of the people in the club love it, I can't even take it to stand up. It just doesn't do anything for me. The rhythm just feels empty to me. They're both brilliant songs, but they have a different feeling. They have a different tempo. An artist like Feng Zhu, at one point in my life, would be very impressive, but equally discouraging because I would look at their artwork and I just go, Phew. I just, I, I, I can't handle it. <laughs> He's just, I just don't know if I'll ever be able to do something like that. And I would compare myself to him. I don't compare myself to him anymore. I recognize myself as being a very different minded person and I produce differently. If being fast paced, if doing five paintings a day burns you out and, and discourages you or watching people do that discourages you, it's because that's not the type of artist you are. So what you need to do is go out and start to learn different artists, how they work, how they produce. And, and the impact that this is going to have on you is you're going to start to discover artists that motivate you. Artists that when you watch them, push you and drive you to produce. There's several artists that whenever I feel a little stuck, when I watch them, somehow it pulls me out of a rut. Darkin, Anthony Jones, Bekshinsky is probably one of the main ones. Even though I can't speak Polish and I can't understand a word that's going on, just hearing him there, glancing over and seeing him just looking at his canvas for 20 minutes recenters me. And then I get back to work. And when it comes to being productive, when it comes to finding that tempo in my work, I avoid watching artists whose tempo is much faster than my own or slower. So I avoid that while I'm in my own zone. The second and last thing is style matters. And what I mean by style is I'm not just talking about other artists whose style match your own. I'm talking about any type of art, dance, music, filmmaking, painting, digital painting, etc. Okay. There are certain artists whose creative process pushes me, inspires me, pulls me into my own little creative bubble that just moves me and gets me off my feet. Artists like Guillermo del Toro and Peter Jackson. I can, if I have the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit making of, playing on the other screen or playing on my TV, off to the corner, I can just hear it going on. I get totally sucked into my own zone because it's a world of imagination that is incredibly familiar to me. It's a world of imagination that I was, that I was raised on that is a part of my DNA. Wade Robson, the dance choreographer, he worked for So You Think You Can Dance. His dance style, the type of music that he creates, the way his body moves, if you see him, he is a dance interpretation of Yermo's work. <laughs> it's dark, it's gothic, it's twisted, it's surreal. It's just, I, I listen to him, I watch him, it invigorates me, it, it empowers me. And it can help me to drive me when I paint. Something completely foreign to painting. Music is the same thing. I can't listen to salsa while I paint because salsa makes me want to dance. It gets me off my ass and makes me want to move. That's very counterproductive for somebody who's trying to sit down and paint. So I listen to the type of music that does move me, that pulls me into this little zone. Or I'll watch documentaries or Dark Matters by Kelly Lee, somebody who has a very meditative voice or Vada Vidya who does Dark Souls lore videos. He's got a very calming, very melancholy type of voice to him. That pulls me into my zone and I can sit there for hours and hours and listen to them. So how does that bring us back to ArtStation? ArtStation is a collaboration of many brilliant artists. Artists of every different level, but the majority of the stuff you're gonna be checking out is probably on the trending page, right? When I'm in my zone and I'm being productive, as much as I love ArtStation, and a little fun fact, ArtStation is based here in Montreal, my hometown, so props to ArtStation, awesome place. But when I'm in my zone, I avoid it like the plague. Because these artists have styles and methods that are so different from my own, it pulls me away from my tempo. It's like listening to a song that doesn't get me moving. That I avoid it 
I focus on my artwork and when I'm done, and when I'm nowhere near my canvas, when my drawing day's over, then I grab a coffee, I sit down, and I go through these different artists' artwork and I just like everything that I see until my fingers get sore. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this week's behind the scenes. And I have a special announcement. In two weeks, as of today, in two weeks, I'm starting a brand new series every Wednesday, 8 to 9 a.m. on my channel where I'm going to be doing paint overs of your work. So if you're interested in having your artwork looked at and critiqued on my channel, then you can get in touch with me and send me your artwork via the contact link I'll leave in the description below. And just do know, I'm only gonna critique finished pieces of art, so if it's some loose sketch, no, I want it to be a finished illustration so I can, so we can benefit a lot from it. Of course, I won't be able to look at everybody's stuff, but I'm gonna make sure that when I offer critiques, it's something that everybody can benefit from. And of course, don't forget, I put out a new behind the scenes video every Monday, eight to 9 a.m. Eastern time, as well as the Brush Sauce Theater Art Contest with myself and of course the famous Tyler Edlin once a month as well. And don't forget about my private online art mentorship, Lucipixel. You can check out all of the information below if you want to up your game. And of course, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe so you'll know when I put out new videos. All right, so happy painting. Send me your stuff if you want it to be looked at. And I love you all. Take care.